The Sony Xperia RKS was actually my third smartphone ever, but trying to use one in 2019, I ran into one major problem, and plenty of minor ones. That doesn't change the fact that initially, this was nothing but a pleasant surprise. The hardware on this phone is aesthetically awesome, and it took me no time at all to get used to the size and how it feels in the hand. In fact, I miss this. It's barely 100 grams of mass makes it so manageable, and to be honest, if Sony remastered this device with an edge-to-edge -edge OLED display and 2019 components, I'd buy it day one. Materially, it is made of plastic, like every phone back then, and a few things are decidedly different, for worse, but also in some ways for better. I'm glad that more modern phones have ditched the terrible notion of a power button on top, but I also love the fact that this has a dedicated camera shutter, an HDMI port, and a removable battery. These aren't the best hardware buttons, but it is still refreshing to have something tactile here, not to mention the long forgotten menu button. It's also interesting how Sony's position has changed in the market, and I think a big part of this is because of how they present themselves. This was one of the most beautiful phones you could get at the time, but since then, Sony has slowly but surely gone from curving their smartphones inwards to curving them outwards, with an intermediate pit stop where they were kind of just flat. Even with its sophisticated glass body, their most recent XZ3 lacks the elegance of this concave shape, and almost looks alien as opposed to classy. While still not the biggest problem, the software skin combined with Android 4.0 is honestly even more inhibitive than the ancient hardware it's running on. It still scrolls through the UI just as well as it did on day one, but it's the fact that almost every command is cumbersome, like changing the brightness or quickly toggling Bluetooth. Android has now gotten so good at presenting you with what you need that it's easy to forget it wasn't always like that. It's almost comedic how unrefined the software looks on this phone, not a single icon on the homepage lines up in terms of size, and the bloatware is real. This is the first time in a while that I've bought a phone that actually has games pre-installed on it, and much, much worse than that, McAfee security. It's almost hard to imagine that the RKS was actually one of the fastest phones in the world when it came out, with an overclocked 1.4GHz single-core Snapdragon S2 chip. I remember being really jealous though, because while this was one of the first smartphones I ever owned and I was super excited about it, at the same time my brother had just got his Galaxy S2, the first mainstream phone with a dual core chip. Either way though, let's just say 2019 applications have a real problem with 2011 hardware, because we're talking about phones here that people upgrade every two years or so, rather than a PC which might be more like five years, things get obsolete fast. And eight years in the world of smartphones genuinely feels like a generation. On the flip side though, it is kind of cool to think that even a $100 off-the-shelf smartphone now could blitz this in almost every aspect. Especially when it comes to battery. And this brings me on to the main problem. You might know that batteries degrade over time as you use them. But what a lot of people forget is that batteries degrade over time even when you don't use them, and what I've experienced with this phone is a demonstration of just how severe this effect is. Even though the battery that came with this was sealed and never used, this RKS has about 40 minutes worth of screen on time, down from over 4 hours if I'd bought it at launch, because that battery has been slowly becoming less and less chemically reactive. So on one hand, this won't apply to most of you, because you're probably not using an 8-year-old phone, but on the other hand, even after 2 years, this effect is still noticeable. So if you've bought an older device recently, even if it was brand new, it is worth considering a battery change to one manufactured this year. Also, if you are going to be storing a battery for a period of time, try to find a cool place to keep it. Room temperature and above will accelerate the deterioration. Okay, going back to an older phone is always a bit of an exercise in appreciation, and this was no different. Whether it's the 4.2 inch LCD display, the single muffled speaker on the back, or the complete lack of a fingerprint scanner, phones are way better now, that's not even up for debate. And yet, somehow, I've really enjoyed using the RKS, and I'm calling it now. Compact smartphones are about to make a return. Every single person I handed this to said either, wow, it's so cute, or I'm surprised I can still type easily on it, or I love that I can reach the top corner with one hand. 
people found that this small and light form factor was a pleasant change as opposed to something that constrained productivity. If you haven't seen the recent video on foldable smartphones, that's been a long time in the making, so I'll leave that linked somewhere from this video, and it's got a special cameo in it. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.